The Senate has asked the country's service chiefs to resign their positions. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, President Muhammadu Buhari has submitted the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper to the Senate. Buhari's letter seeking the consideration and approval of the upper chamber was read by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan at the plenary on Tuesday. The Federal Executive Council had on Wednesday approved the strategy paper with 12.6 trillion naira budget projection for each of the three fiscal years. The Minister of State for Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mr. Clement Agba, had listed other projections in the budget to include $40 per barrel oil benchmark, oil production volume of 1.6 million barrels per day, inflation rate of 11.9%, projected gross domestic growth rate of 3%, and revenue target of 7.5 trillion naira. At number 9, US President Donald Trump has promised to resume televised coronavirus briefings and finally spoke out in favor of wearing masks. With only just about 100 days until the election against Democrat Joe Biden, Trump is beginning to respond to public anger over his troubled mismanagement of the pandemic. On many occasions, he denied the seriousness of the problem, an attitude symbolized by his mockery of masks and refusal to back up doctors' recommendations for mass use. At number 8, the Central Bank of Nigeria disclosed on Monday that it has handed out 3.3 trillion naira COVID-19 intervention funds to the productive sectors of the economy. This was stated by the CBN Governor Godwin Emefile at a press briefing after the July 2020 Monetary Policy Committee's meeting. The CBN says it has also given intervention funds to businesses affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and endorsed the restructuring of loans. MFLA said the committee is hopeful that upon further drawdown of these intervention facilities, the Nigerian economy will reset and rebound. At number 7, the police command in Niger state has uncovered a torture center in the state and rescued 15 children from captivity. According to Daily Trust, the center is located at Angwa Kwamba in Suleja and houses a number of Almajiris from two years old and above. The children had allegedly undergone a series of torture from their master, 146-year-old Umar Ahmed. They were also found with wounds on their backs, some of which had dried up, while different irons used in carrying out the act were discovered by the police who visited the house following some complaints by some residents of the area. At number 6, on Tuesday, the House of Representatives took a motion to investigate the alleged looting of over 613.5 billion naira appropriated to cater to correctional centers and inmates across the country. The motion was brought to the floor by the minority leader of the House, Ndudi Elumelu. At number 5, Former presidential spokesman Renu Omokri has come out swinging against Omo Yeleshoware, the publisher of Sahara Reporters, and petitioned the MacArthur Foundation about their funding of Sahara Reporters, saying Showare is a known blackmailer and a peddler of fake and fabricated news. In a letter to MacArthur Foundation, who had given Showare a grant of $1.3 million, Omokri explained that the online news platform, which MacArthur claims is transparent, gives misleading and unverified information to tarnish the image of Nigerians. At number 4, the Lagos Third Mainland Bridge will be shut from midnight of Friday, July 24th for the scheduled maintenance by the Federal Ministry of Works. Minister of Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola said maintenance of the busy bridge was to replace damaged components for better motoring experience. The maintenance work will last for a period of six months from July 2020 to January 2020. At number three, members of the People's Democratic Party in the House of Representatives said it will commence impeachment proceedings against President Muhammad Buhari if the calculated blackmail against the National Assembly and insecurity in the country is not checked. This was contained in a statement issued on Monday by its leader, Kingsley Chinda. A four-week ultimatum was given to the executive to provide security to Nigerians and commence proper cleaning of the embarrassing and notorious corruption cases involving the NCDC and the EFCC. If not, the PDP members said they would revert to relevant sections of the constitution and commence impeachment proceedings against the president. At number two, hours after the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Godfrey Lakpabio, claimed almost 60% of NDDC contracts were awarded to members of the National Assembly, the House of Representatives has asked him to publish within 48 hours members of the Assembly who received the said contract. The order was given by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila. He further said the names of the companies and the contracts, especially those involving members of the Ninth Assembly, should be published or Akpabe would face the wrath of the House. Finally, at number one, the Senate has asked the country's service chiefs to resign their positions. The motion was brought to the floor of the Senate by the Vice Chairman of the Senate Committee on Customs, Senator Ayo Fadahunsi, on Tuesday. The motion was overwhelmingly supported by other members who lamented the frustrating war against insurgency and banditry in the country. 
The demand was ruled by the Senate President Ahmed Lawan, noting that the stepping aside of the service chiefs would give room for President Muhammad Buhari to appoint new ones. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.